Taco Tuesday again back here. We all got together and we sold blood plasma. I didn't know you knew how to sew. Thunderbird better. The turbo cape. Yeah. It drives good, doesn't it? back at it again here with the 64 galaxy 500 the nascar tribute nascar inspired car so if you haven't watched our old videos we got a video of us getting this thing out of the junkyard after 30 plus years of sitting outside cleaning it up we got a video of us getting it running for the first time then we got a video of us getting the brakes going driving it for the first time i think we got a video of us doing the nascar hoops and casings on this thing getting a NASCAR exhaust put on it. Uh, no mufflers, of course. But uh, today we're gonna start on a video where we're gonna fix some of the problems this thing has. Last time we tried to put an alternator on it and I got the, the donkey one and it didn't fit. So we got the standard issue poverty model here. Got a new uh, sending unit for the fuel tank. Got a new gas tank for it. Got new brake shoes, because I think the rear end's been swapped. Actually, I think the whole drive line's been swapped because the engine appears to be out of like a 67 model. Uh, same thing with the rear end. It appears to be out of like a, maybe a Fairlane or something because this has uh, smaller brakes than what it's supposed to have. Also got our wheel cylinder. So we're going to try to get all the brakes working. We got to get a master cylinder too. I forgot about that. But uh, we got to get all that stuff going before we get our brakes, our fuel system, and our charging system going. Try to get this thing back out on the road. For the first time in over 30 years, we've never drove this thing out on the road because our brakes failed this last time, right? Yeah. Ralphie, can you hand me the 916? It's on that parts washer. Thank you. So the bottom bolt is a 5.8. It's a big long bolt with a spacer. The top one is a 916 on this thing, which who knows, it's probably been changed over the years. <laughs> Of course, you always want to unhook your battery before you do anything like this. Luckily for me, I only own like two batteries, so it's in the car that I'm driving right now. Yeah, the, all the same studs seem to be on the back of it. Uh, <laughs> looks like my wife's family's been in here wiring again. You know how they are. They do a lot of wiring, but I'm going to say that there's a chance that it may not be the alternator's bad. It may be this old wiring that has been messed up so we may have to end up tracing some wires if this doesn't work all these were 3 8 and this one was a 7 16 it looks uh identical to me it's like you know high school photo and what you look like down at the bingo hall this is pretty rickety here don't really like it what we got. These are actually 5 16 While I was digging in here in the wiring, so this wire right here, which is, you know, your tan wire and your orange wire, 
Uh, goes down here underneath the alternator now that the alternator's out of the way. It's been cut all the way through, so I'm gonna reconnect those. You know, that's probably our issue in the first place, but I mean, you can't have a new water pump and carb without a new alternator, right? I mean, it's like having the shoes and the belt without the purse, right? You know what we do around here. We'll just butt connector it and crimp it. That's all we do. Well, as with all things old cars, this has got a little deeper than I thought. We got a wire over here. And I've just seen way down here, we have two more wires that are cut. We have this enormous yellow wire that's not hooked up to anything. So I got to do some tracing on this and see what's up. Man, this just keeps getting worse and worse. Look at, look at that wire. That wire has been chewed or cut through. We got those I just showed you. And you keep going over this way. What the heck? I didn't even know my wife had that many family members. This is a wreck over here. Did you do this wire? No. Was it I you? I don't do wiring. You don't do wiring? I don't like to. It's a mess. Oh, look, we got even more there. The brake light switch is barely holding on. So this is what happens when you work with a goat. Uh, you go get your brand new roll of wire and you realize, oh, he's chewed it in two in a bunch of different places. So that was Rocky's doing. When he comes in here later, we're gonna have to talk to him about it. Are you in puppy jail? <laughs> it looks like you're in puppy jail. Well, look who decided to show up. Where you been, boy? Huh? You want some vainas? Is that what you're wanting? I'm all out of animal crackers again. You ate them all. He's the only goat we have that will eat them. All the rest of the goats don't like them. I'm gonna have to look up a wiring diagram on this because obviously <laughs> somebody has took this orange wire and twisted around this yellow one. So uh, something is totally wrong in the way this is hooked up. I'm gonna have to change some of this. I don't know why this is, yellow wire is wrapped around this black one. I mean, I can't answer questions about my wife's family like that, what they're thinking. He had got over there a minute ago in one of those red chairs, so I decided to bring the the Osco chair over here and let him sit in it. He loves sitting in these fold-out chairs. I don't know what his deal is with that, but he does love it. Rocky just knocked this sign over on the car. He got in between <laughs> the sign and the wall and knocked the whole thing down. Yeah, that's not good, Rocky. You could have hurt somebody. You could have hurt your little self. Golly. <laughs> you definitely made his day while while coming out here. He was looking for some animal crackers, you know, on top of the Fairmont, on top of all my tools over there, on top of this car. Okay, well. We got that installed now. I ended up just running all new wires. I wanna tie them all up down there, but. So, a bunch of this stuff was just all a mess. The only one I'm not sure about is this one, which comes off the, uh, it comes off of this first leg right here on the regulator. I'm not sure how it's supposed to go, but it was twisted together that way and I just crimped it. But we ran all new wires from over there. I looked up the wiring diagram on, on how to do it. And instead of just full with the old wires, we just ran new ones. There's, there's what I found online and drew out that it's supposed to do. This is all the wiring junk I cut out of there that's been twisted and tied together. I mean, I got little junctions everywhere around here that I'd cut out of this thing. It was such a mess. I can't believe they just twisted all that together. So hopefully, if I, if I did everything right, uh, we'll have a car that actually charges now after all that. May not have really needed the alternator, but, you know, 
Alright, might as well. That thing looked pretty nasty anyway. At least it makes the engine look better, right? Well, the Earth has revolved around the sun since we last videoed about this galaxy. It's like 5 a.m. Everybody's asleep but me. We must have drifted away from the sun because it's like 20 degrees out here. No, I'm just kidding. I know it's all flat. <laughs> I know the Earth doesn't revolve around the sun. 21 degrees. This is all the heat we got in this 60 foot long shop. I'm going to go ahead and get some electrical tape and zip ties and tie all these wires up that I ran through there that are, you know, way too long and stuff like that. And get all that up out of the way so it don't get in the fan. There we go. That's a little bit better. Got some tape on that stuff. Ran up through here. Just hope I did it all correct and I don't have to redo anything. Uh... But I think we got everything done now with the alternator and the wiring up here. I need to fix that brake wire. I probably should do that, but might as well go ahead and change the master cylinder while I'm at it. If my memory serves me correct, I believe I bought this uh, master cylinder here from Wrong Auto. And now we've got, we bought a new one from uh, O'Reilly's. I probably will have better luck with that if uh, history repeats itself. Maybe we'll have brake lights now. Man, these brake systems back then were simple and dangerous, I guess, probably as well. But uh, just an old single pot master cylinder. And from what I've seen, the NASCAR cars of this era, they ran just the old single pot master cylinder with uh, drum brakes as well, which, you know, they were running almost 200 miles an hour by that point. Uh, it's kind of crazy that that's all they ran. And you know, if it, if it was good enough for Richard Petty, it's good enough for me. Now, I honestly have no idea what went wrong with this thing. I'm I'm hoping there's a seal that's bad in there or something because when we tried to drive it, uh, it worked for just a little bit, and then the pedal went straight to the floor. We had no brakes at all. So hopefully, this new master cylinder will fix the problem. No when to walk away. No when to run. You never count your money on sitting on the table. Never truer words have ever been saying, you know? I've got a couple of these master cylinders before that I could not get this out of, this fitting. Sometimes they really put that thing in there. I don't know what the deal is why they put them in there so tight or if they put some sort of coating on there that makes them uh, stick in there like a... Uh, thread locker stuff i got a yeah one inch socket fits this i hope this fixes all our brake problems we had it's not fun when you're driving something the brakes go out easy enough huh she's a big girl to punch by yourself She takes up every inch of this bay here in the shop. Man, look how pretty that thing is. Did you want well, we might as well start on the rear brakes now. And I know, best looking wheels and casings you've seen. I'm with you, man, I love them too. My buddy Hot Rod Hoarder hook me up with these casings you faithful followers will know that we ran into an issue with this where the rear brake shoes were not the factory size and we couldn't find any at the time we didn't know what it was supposed to be so I, what i think has happened from what i can see is this has the same brake size as like a i believe it was a fair lane we found so these brakes are one inch smaller than what's supposed to be on this car. I'm not sure what's happened. Somebody's done the old swap on this thing at some point. So hopefully we have all the parts to get it going now. That's all you need. Universal key right here. Okay, let's get our old rough drums and parts out of here. Well, that ought to be easy enough to figure out. 
right? I only took it apart a few months back. Now, thankfully, uh, you know, over uh, the years of working on the uh, drum brake stuff, I have acquired quite a bit of hardware kits over the years that I bought off Wrong Auto and O'Reilly's, places like that. So hopefully I have enough parts and springs and pieces to get this thing to work with all that. One little thing I figured out working on these old Fords is you get a rear brake hose and the factory one has a junction block that splits to the two rear brakes, right? Every time I order one off like Rock Auto or even, even the ones I've ordered for the cars at O'Reilly's, I end up with this hose that doesn't have the junction block. And I've never had one where the, the junction block actually unscrewed. But if you order one for a Ford truck, here's the part number. It comes with the built-in junction block, just like the car has. So I always end up ordering one for uh, like a 73 Ford F-150 or F-100. So there's a tip for you. Yeah, I got a whole stack of wrong rear brake hoses over here. Up under here, look at our, our fuel tank. This is why we had to get a new one. It's gonna be holding it there. And then somebody's ran into the back of it there with a, I don't know, a unicycle or something. But this is about the rustiest spot on this car right here. So I'm a little bit worried about, you know, putting a new fuel tank in it and filling that bad boy up. That's a lot of weight hanging off that cross member, but uh, we'll see what we can do. That is hard as a rock. This may be the easiest fuel tank I've ever removed. It's just uh, coat hangers holding it in there. Which, I, I have nothing against holding things in with coat hangers. I've done it. We've all done it. Here we go. <laughs> it just about came back and hit me in the face. Well, I haven't measured it, but it looks about the same. This one's got a vent that that one doesn't have. This one's got some holes in it that that one doesn't have over there. And a little bit of a whiskey dent. It's definitely very similar to that one. Got to put our new sending unit in here. This is kind of funny. The sending unit came with a lock ring and gasket and so did the fuel tank. And uh, look at the seals, how much different they are. Uh, I, this one definitely appeals, appears to be a much better seal. I'm not going to use this one, I don't think. And I believe I'll use this one. This proves it right here. I've got a servant's heart. Could be working on the galaxy. I'm out here stretching this water hose out so it can thaw out so my wife can water her animals when she wakes up. Servant's heart, when, you know, when you're born with one, what do you do? You just do things for other people. Well, Ralphie's woke up. You look more like Randy than Ralphie all bundled up like that. It's cold. Oh, you brought Rocky with you? Yeah. Well, good morning, Rocky. You guys finally woke up. You're on a different sleep schedule than I am. You want some good morning animal crackers? Are you glad we brought you some more? I know you love your animal crackers. Man, he's just an animal cracker eating machine. Rocky's trying to open the brake hose for us. It's the same, isn't it? Yeah. I think so. I don't know what they've done swap rooski wise on this thing, but they did something. Next to your ice cold cooler. Yeah. Hey, we've been putting some drinks in here. It, it keeps them cold for us. Link in the description below for ice cold to get a uh, discount on buying one of these. We really have liked this cooler. Uh, we got it for the motorhome, but the motorhome ain't done yet. So yeah. we've been using it out here in the shop and I love this thing. For you guys that have watched the other videos, this thing's got a posi in it. I don't know how rare that was at the time, but this thing turns over both casings. We got several videos of this thing just boiling the casings off don't we <laughs> rocky uh loves sitting in that chair you're in his chair you help me take the brake lines off huh? really this exhaust was held up with coat hangers too the this guy he must have had a whole lot of coat hangers I wonder what he was hanging his clothes up with because he couldn't have had his clothes on with coat hangers he used them all in the car Check this out, the fuel line had a rusted out hole in it, so they patched it with a rubber hose. And they did the same thing up there, probably more on up through there. They just kept patching it instead of replacing the thing. Trying to get these old brake lines out. I don't wanna 
I don't want to hook up the new wheel cylinders to these until I flush them out because you don't want to take all the rust that's in the lines and just push it right through your brand new wheel cylinders and make them mess up for you. I'm going to go ahead and take this brake line off because both ends of these brake lines that connect to where the junction block is are froze up. I want to see if I can get them freed up. If not, we'll have to make new lines. I mean, this is just a tragedy. My fishy flops are about to tear all the way out. Now, I feel like I should have got more mileage out of these things. I paid $16 for these and they're already tearing up on me. That's ridiculous. <laughs> well, that one doesn't work. That one does work. <sighs> okay, now we're just gonna heat this thing up. What does the heat do? breaks it loose why no what how does it break it loose heat yeah but what's the heat do to it to make it come loose heat it up i, I don't know heat makes metal expand so like the nuts on oh, there yeah. and as it heats up it expands just a little bit and that gets it away from that tube that's you know stuck in there Look at that. Every time. It just works, doesn't it? Yeah. Whoa, whoa, bro, back up. Are you licensed to use that yet? Uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> so that one's fine. <laughs> I don't got enough boost to do that. Almost slide the collar forward after you get it in there. Yep, get in there and now push the collar towards me. There you go. You got it. Oh, there you go. You got it, whatever it was. It's free now. See if you can walk through it. <laughs> Is it working? Yeah. Our uh, differential vent tube is stopped up, I believe. That's all she needed right there. Just a little tip cleaner. You can see that the bottom of this thing is curved, so you wanna make sure and put that side towards the rear end. Put your vent tube bolt back in there. All right, we got all our brake lines kind of hooked up loosely. I'm gonna go ahead and bolt in the uh, wheel cylinders and get them bolted up since we blew through these lines and know they're clean now. the cars I found that were parked 30 years or 20 years, you know, were like some of these other people find. They don't need new brake parts. They don't need new fuel tanks or anything. It's just, you put a battery on and start them up and drive them. I don't know how that is. There must be a less harsh climate or something where they live. I mean, how is it that all the rubber parts aren't ruined? After 20, 30 years parked outside. Oh, I just don't understand it. This is a 5.8 uh, socket for that bolt right there. Anyway, got our old brake lines back in there. Got our new brake hose. We got to make a new metal line from this all the way to the front. Because if you watch the old video, uh, we kinkle dinkled that thing all the way up through there. Never could get it to really kink off. So we just had to plug it. Uh, I think the long shoe goes on the back, if I'm correct. I believe that's what these things do. So when we pulled these shoes off with our puller, we bent these little guys, we bent those. So we're gonna straighten all this stuff out to make it work again. Man, drum brakes are just a job. It is nothing like just putting brake pads on your disc brake car. They must have backed their old boat down in the water one too many times with this thing because I've never seen brakes so rusty before. Got our brake tool here. I believe it was Sean that sent us this. Sent it through two different shippers to get it to us, and I'm glad we have it today. Let me get your little finger. I feel like the number of people that know how to build drum brakes, you know, are, are uh, that number is probably getting a lot smaller. There you go. I think I got it on there now. So we bought a new 
uh, adjuster cable. Basically, we bought all the self-adjuster kit, and I, I replaced some of the springs that we had over here and some old kits I bought that I didn't use. So I think we've got everything on this. Somebody explained to me why there's a long shoe on the back. I don't really know the reasoning behind that. We're gonna have to hog that out a little bit. I don't really know the reasoning behind why this one's longer than the front one. Oh yeah. So you wanna keep adjusting your brake shoes out until it starts dragging on the shoe or your brakes won't work good. Yeah, like that. Well, I'm gonna take my parts and go to the other side and do the same thing. Not much point in showing you that whole stuff unless we run into a problem. I gotta jack the front of this thing up now and make our brake line to go from the front all the way to the back so that we can have rear brakes finally. It's kind of sad, you know, Ralphie, because that means it's not gonna do as good a burnout. What? Yeah, because it's got rear brakes now. It's probably not gonna do as good a burnout. Uh, we definitely can't do the big bowl of casings off we did before. That brings tears to my eyes. Yeah. <laughs> Once again, for like the millionth time on this channel, gonna use our handy dandy flare tool to make a new brake line. I probably could have this in a vise, really. That would be better. But that would make me not have to walk across the shop and stuff like that. You're too lazy. Too lazy. You want to make sure you got your tube nut on there before you do this. Because a bunch of times I haven't done that. Me and Ralphie bought these the other day. It's like pliers to do tube bending. And I haven't used them yet. Does it go this way? Is that what I'm... How do I be... <laughs> I feel like it should be this way. Oh, that's probably the right way. Because this... Yeah. Well, that's cool. And yeah, that works nice. So we have a very tiny brake line that we're replacing down here. Because I just kinkle dinkled the brakes off. So we could just run front ones. So we got to go from that junction block there all the way back to the back of the car now with the all new line. Well, it's basically impossible for me to get a video of where this is at, but it's right up here, I promise. Right above my hand. And we're just about to get it tightened down. So we're back here uh, cutting the brake line. Oh, my handle's broke. Oh, okay. So we have no handle on our brake cutting tool now. So I'm going to have to find a different one or something. That's no good. I'm going to peel this stuff off. Ah. We had to downgrade to our little baby one, which I guess uh, that's what this thing's made for anyway, is cutting brake lines, but there we go. She got the puppy, the black the one. one. The one we're keeping? What? We're keeping the, um, which one you got? The black one. Oh. I'm not sure about it. She's a sweet one. We should keep her right. Well, unfortunately, there's no bracket for this. Uh, bracket's long gone, so we're just gonna probably zippy tie this up here to this cross member and call it good. I mean, zip ties, that's probably just as good as like a metal bracket to hold the brake lines up, I would think. And I'm not butching it out because I'm cutting the ends off of the zip ties. She's shaking her tail. Huh, you like it? You can stand up. You don't have to lay down. I don't know about this. It's okay to stand up. Oh, oh, good. Yeah. I cracked the rear bleeder screws here, and it's like late now. I don't know. It's eight o'clock at night or something. So I gotta go in and watch Jeopardy and eat some Vainas, drink a few. Yeah, drink RC Cola or two. And uh, I'm gonna let this thing kind of gravity bleed overnight. Let some brake fluid work its way down this way, so it'll make. <laughs> where's she going? It'll maybe make a little quicker job of bleeding it tomorrow. Let's get out of here. Where'd you get lost, little one? Yeah. Right. Yeah. What are you doing? Oh, are you the big boy? Kind of the big one. <laughs> She's tuckered out. She wants to lay down flat on the floor. Well, it's the next morning now. I got my morning voice on. Everybody else is still in bed, so. 
I'm gonna get started back on this thing. Let's see how much our, uh, <laughs> our master cylinder uh, bled down overnight. That was more than half, wasn't it? Oh yeah, you can see the poles that left overnight while it was out here. So that should be a good sign. I'm gonna I'm gonna close up those bleeder screws now. Let's see what the brake pedal actually feels like. Well, nothing. That's exactly what it feels like. It's nothing at all. So we still definitely got a lot of air. Well, looks like we just found another problem here. It is pouring brake fluid out of this driver's front. It's looking like we have a wheel cylinder messed up. Maybe that's why our brakes went out. Man, that grease right there is super tacky. Yeah, it's blew out that wheel cylinder for some reason. Oh, look, the whole the whole adjuster and everything's come off. If I had to guess, I would say this lower adjuster came off and then trying to fill this gap up, this wheel cylinder probably pushed out too far and pushed the piston out of the bore in here. Hopefully we can figure out if we have anything wrong we gotta fix and get this thing fixed. Yep. There you go, push that hole piston out of that wheel cylinder hopefully we can stuff all this back in there and make this thing work again this is the problem with running a what they call like a single pot master cylinder uh it's not the safest thing because if you have a, a problem anywhere in your whole system everything goes out so that's why they got away from these kind of master cylinders years ago Okay, well, I got it all stuck back together. I got that seal and spring and piston all pushed back in there. Uh, I really feel like our adjuster is what came loose down here, made that blow out. So I'm gonna try to clean these brake shoes off as best I can. They're probably ruined, honestly, and stick all this back together and blew the brakes. What the heck is up there? Is that the guineas on my roof? While well, all that brake cleaner is drying up, I'm gonna go ahead and hang this uh, fuel tank. I'm really not sure if the floor is still strong enough to hold it, so I wanna put a ratchet strap on it to hold it up until I get figured out how we're going to attach it. Which end is which? Oh, Ooh, little booger. Oh, come on. The strap don't work right. We may be done. So, I, I gotta look at some pictures and figure this one out. Because our... It looks like this thing has like a hook. Maybe a bolt that's got a hook that goes over here. But, man, it's far away from there. I, you would think these would line up, but... Same thing over here. I gotta look at some pictures and see what we gotta make to hold this up. It looks like there's like a... A bolt that use over this way or like a J and goes over that way. So we're gonna have to take some sort of bolt we got around here, bend in the torch and make these because uh, we don't have them. Crank them down in that vise. <coughs> you got it? Yeah. Is it good? Do you think I can get it tighter? Yeah. With your left hand. <laughs> <laughs> Scare you? Alright, hit it, Ralphie. Keep going. Keep going. Go down there, Ralphie. Look at that little pass there. Too hot. That one. That one will fall down. That's probably good. Perfect. There you go. Look how hot that is. It's hot still. Yeah. Think that's gonna work? 
Yeah. Like the guy on uh, Dance of the Wolves eating the bacon. <laughs> Look at that. It's like perfect. I mean, how could it ever fall off? It's impossible. Well, there we go. I'm just, I'm a little bit worried about the structural integrity of where it hooks in the front because that cross member is basically the rusty spot on this whole car. Well, since this is terribly rusty here, just because I'm worried about dropping the tank out on the ground out in the middle of the road, I'm gonna leave this ratchet strap right here. I'm just gonna run a, a brand new fuel line all the way to the front. You know, rubber of course, since uh, I just don't wanna, I don't have the metal line here. I don't wanna have to go find it. Metal line would be better though, it would look a lot better. Well, I didn't have one single fuel line that was long enough to reach front to back of the car. So I'm gonna relocate the fuel filter under here uh, instead of up under the engine bay. That way I can use two, two kind of long pieces. This thing is super long, like, uh, it takes up every bit of this bay. Hey, I'm gonna zip this, tie this stuff out of the way. I'm gonna double check our adjustment on this one because I don't wanna have this problem again. Lose brakes. I'm gonna adjust those a little tighter. Got it adjusted where we got some drag now. I may have just had it too loose before. Maybe that's why the linkage came off there. I hope that's what's wrong. How do I do this normally? You tighten it tight and then you loosen it off. And usually I try to spin the drum too, you know? Make sure it's like, yeah. There we go. So tighten it up. Tighten it up a little more. Tighten it up until it's like kind of stops, then back it off a little bit. Okay. Think it's good? Yeah. Ralphie approved? Yeah, whatever. I think this goes first. Yeah, that goes first. You got it. Over this? Mm hmm. Squeeze in. No, I need a new one. Let me see. Yeah, I kind of push it together. Yeah, I know, but I got it. Bloop. Then you just bend the, bend the tabs over. Which way? Should I bend them? Just whatever. As long as the cap will go on, I don't care what you do. <laughs> Usually you bend one one way and one the other way. Why can't I just do both? Okay. That's fine. And that keeps the nut from backing off. So you don't run a wheel off, as your mom would say. <laughs> yeah now you just need to barely tap the edges and kind of watch for which side's in farther the side that's sticking out the farthest that's the side you need to tap on there you go now kind of tap around the edges you know what time it is now Wheel of Fortune. no not will <laughs> fortune no brake bleeding time uh. what's that about uh, <laughs> Hopefully it doesn't blow this seal out again like it did this morning for me. What? Yeah, that's why we lost our brakes. Was, see all that brake fluid? The uh, seal blew out of that when we were trying to go NASCAR driving. <laughs> exactly. Nice not to have a fuel hose running through the door now, huh? Yeah. I've always been told to start at the farthest point. So this is the farthest point from the master cylinder. Oh yeah, we got some air that time. Harder. Oh gosh. Taco Tuesday again back here. It's a lot harder. That's good. All right, hold it down. That's just fluid now. All right, hold it down. All right, hold it up again. Hold it down. Steering wheel. I just looked at that. I think we're good. Go here. Quit turning. Sure. 
you're gonna have a NASCAR car, you better get quick about changing your casings or you're gonna be a lap down. We're still on the lead lap. I'm gonna go ahead and change the oil on this thing again. Now we did the oil change on the will it start video, but uh, if you remember, this thing had uh, the old oil we took out of the, of the uh, Metro mod that didn't start. So I feel like we probably should change on this. Sitting there perfectly centered for some reason. Wait, I think I saw something down there. What? What did you see? There's something down there. You saved us right there. There's a leaf in it. That would have went right in our carb jet. Actually, would have went in the fuel filter. Yeah. Well, we all got together and we sold blood plasma and got enough to get 10 gallons of 93 octane since that's like $500 nowadays. It's like Mad Max when fuel's scarce and expensive. Yeah. Fill a car with a full tank of gas. It's worth more than one with an empty tank. It doubled the money of a bunch of my cars if you filled the tank up with fuel to try to sell it. Uh, I don't see none. I see brakes on it though. Well, yeah. Look at that. Son. Boom. You're a genius. I'm going to try to start it. It's been like. I don't know. What's it been? A couple months since we started? Whenever the brakes went out, we haven't started since then. Can I get in? Yeah. <laughs> It'd be so much easier if it was a NASCAR car. Uh, what is it got my back? Oh, I got it. Uh, oh, I got it. Did you make it? <laughs> wow. Like it's running off of what we pour in it, and that's it. That doesn't make sense. Carburetor's not fueling at all. Do we have like a soft up carburetor? Do we get trash in it? We might be able to like start it and just put it down in reverse and throw our heads forward. <laughs> you think that'll make it run longer if we throw it down in reverse? Yeah. Oh, you fell. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.
I'm just gonna take the fuel line off and see see if this thing's pumping fuel when we uh, crank it up here. I'm gonna put it in this bottle so we don't spray fuel. Hopefully, don't spray fuel all over the place. Maybe it'll pump it into that bottle. Pump's working. So, we're gonna float, huh? What? I've ran out of ideas, so I'm gonna pull the carburetor off and just check it out. I feel like it's gotta have some sort of passage stocked up that I'm not that I'm not seeing here. Cause it's just absolutely not fueling. You just gotta be something going on here that I'm not figuring out. The primary accelerator pump is not really doing anything. Now, the secondaries are. I don't know why the primaries are not. The accelerator pump's not working. Well, there's just hardly any fuel in there at all. Maybe our needle and seat just needs to be cleaned out or something. Maybe we got some trash in our needle and seat. See, that bowl was full. We gotta have something. I'm gonna start with this needle and see. You guys ever have a trouble like this where the car was running totally fine when you parked it and then it just doesn't run at all? And then you have to trace down some issue and you think, how the heck did that happen right then, you know? That was stuck. It was stuck on there because when I pulled it, it popped loose. So our our needle and seat was jammed up together. Huh. Must have just either had some trash in it or it just sat there too long from sitting in my front yard for like a couple months. So now I'm going to reset the float level when I put this back in. Now, all I did was just watch and I saw that the top of the float was even with the center of these Phillips screws. You're really supposed to measure this stuff, but... Who needs measurements when you have your eyes? So this is as good a time as any for a lesson on carburetors. So this is your power valve on a Holly. Six and a half means the, that's how many inches of vacuum the, the carburetor is at when this opens up and enriches the fuel system. So it, it adds fuel to the fuel system at a certain uh, vacuum level. This is your primary jets. That's your secondary jets. So when you run on the two barrels on the front, this is where all the fuel that fuels the engine goes. Then when the four barrel opens up, you know what I'm talking about. That's when it fuels through these back jets here, which these are 80s. These are, I think, 73s. So it puts more fuel in there. Uh, also, your accelerator pumps are these right here. This is what's called a double pumper. So it has a accelerator pump front and rear. Yeah. And so when you pump the gas, that's what's spraying gas into the engine. Right here is your high and low speed uh, air bleeds. So a serious Holly carburetor will have screw in air bleeds and that adjusts like your air fuel mixture like at low speeds and high speeds. Um, and you can also change out the diameter of your squirter nozzles. You can pretty much do anything you want to with these things. Just thought I would show you and you while uh, we had the part. Yeah, the back one's fine. See, it's moving. That front one was just jammed up. Man, I hope this works. I mean, it makes sense. I don't know uh, why I did that. I've been just sitting too long, but of course, one of the nuts is a different size. I'm gonna go ahead and fill my bowls up again for the 50th time here.
it's super loud. But when you had me stand back there, it scared me to death. Like it stopped. I, my heart. I thought about it after you was back there. I thought, oh my gosh, she was back there when I cranked it. Yeah, right, right at the exhaust. exhaust. Yeah, this thing counts some taters. I'll tell you that right now. So I adjusted the choke all the way open, and uh, we're gonna see if that is is what is making this thing I love so high or not. It's really loud in here. Man, it does sound good. It does sound good. I wonder how it'll sound. I, I definitely put too much cooling in it. It's definitely wanting to push that back out. Do you love that? Yeah. Did you just open the door on our NASCAR car? <laughs> what is wrong with you, son? Why don't you get back in and crawl out the window? No, the, you, we'll give you a pass on this one, but this is the last time. I wish the weather was better out here. It's a muddy mess right now. But we got a couple more things we still want to get done on this. I'm going to work on maybe stitching the seat back together a little bit. You know, not too professional, but a little bit. And then trying to patch up some of these floors uh, before we actually take this thing out on the road and see how she does. Right, Ralphie? NASCAR car, son. Evening, ladies. You out here in the rain? There's Pebbles. Rocky ain't in here with you. What's wrong with him? Well, there you are. We were wondering where you was. You little buffalo looking thing. Let's see if we can find some metal. <laughs> I knew I had a piece of metal out here. This is a side off of a van that we didn't use to work. Eat it as fast as it comes out. Okay. So, we do need to fill in our frame inspection hole here in the floor. We don't want Ralphie or, you know, Squeezy. She could fall right through this. So, I'm going to do some measuring here. We're going to cut some sort of patch panel to fill in this hole. But, hey, at least we know our frame's solid, right? You don't count any of the several eights. It looks like uh, about 25 inches by 25 inches would uh, patch up everything we need to patch up over here so we don't lose any passengers. Me and Rocky got this cut. That's uh, about the shape we need, you know. We'll just let the rough end drag on this one what we don't get right. We'll be able to make that work. We'll just have to bend this down and get the right shape out of it. Where it goes right there. Oh, everybody wants a hug. Hey, you think you can do a little stitch stitch on this seat for dad? Uh, sure. You think you can try to get that to Please. stay up so I don't have to deal with anyone? This one's actually not ripped up, but that one and the back ones are kind of... Right. See, you've just got a servant's heart. I mean, when you have a servant's heart, you just do things for others. Okay. You know? Yeah. Okay. You're just born with it. All right. Some people have a servant's heart, and they just always thinking about others. I guess I was just blessed with this. Yeah. You roller skating? Yes. yes I am. You're a good roller skater, aren't you? You love to roller skate. Yeah. Rocky. Oh, here you go. Hey, 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 hey. You'll hurt yourself with that string. That's not right. the nosiest goat you know.
There's not a no a no zero one anywhere. Got my welder out. Ralph, he ain't falling out now. Didn't it wall off? I tried to. It's tough, to isn't it? Yeah. Looks like back here, it's it's like rusted out in opposite corners. The other two floor pans are good, so we need about 22 inches. And you know, don't worry about them several eights in there. Uh, 22 by 14 would be good. same holes yeah because that's the only way it's too thick to do anything else it's sad that it's you know shrunk up and ripped out like that but 30 years in a junkyard does that i guess yeah i'm gonna try to fit this in here uh, i would be mig welding these in but the welder that i have here at the shop only works on the really thick metal because the uh the switch that changes the voltage has been broken for like 10 years. So I can weld thick stuff with it, but it's really hard to thick, to weld thin stuff, especially rusty stuff like this. That's why I'm not gonna weld these in right now. Usually I put Copperhead Road on before I stomp like this. Enough for the girls I hang out with. No, you cannot eat the stuffing out of the seat. It might make you sick. Quit. I got some stitching done on that one and this one back there, but the problem we're running into, aside from it, being so shrunk up that it's like an inch and a half from meeting up right here is rocky please don't do that is that uh um the material is so stiff and and fragile that it's really hard to push the needle through i think we need thicker needles and probably some thicker thread to do this if we're going to do it right but we're gonna get a few in there just so you know this thing ain't flapping in the wind while we're going down the road i didn't know you knew how to sew don't you start with me. Don't you start. <laughs> you guys ready to go? Yeah. Got your nice car helmet on? Oh, Lord. Yeah. Yes. Uh, oh, man. We're going to take this thing out in the road for the first time in 30 years. Finally got our brakes working. Got our holes patched up. And hopefully she's ready to go.
not in the line for sure, but it's just so cool to get to drive something like this for the first time in 30 years. I mean, I wonder who was the last person to drive this thing, you know? It's got really good power, too, for a big car. I gotta pump the brakes. It's like it, I think it still has air in the system, really. It's such a big car, too, isn't it? This is what everybody drove back then. Like everybody drove these big sedan cars, and nowadays you don't see them at all. I, I hate that the sedan, big sedan car, has died. And the SUVs are everything you see. You guys want to see what they'll do, don't I? Yeah. Remember, uh, you always look for the cops first. bogged a little there at the end but uh it did pretty good i think the brakes was getting us there at the end yeah. it does have some pretty wide casings to turn over oh god why <laughs> this difficult it's the only downside to owning a full-blown nascar car is that right there just trying to get in now do you see him hit the ground 
Oh my god. Well, you know. Things like that happen. We'll get that back on there. We'll, we'll get that some duct tape and get that back on there. Well, you know how we end the videos off here. Got our RC Cola. Hey, see? I told you, it doesn't happen every time. But drink your RC Colas. Eat your bourbon. What are they? Bourbon barbecue vines? Yeah. Those are the good ones. And pour one out for your homies. You always want to pour one out for your homies. Check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok ah. at SleeperDude88. And uh, you can check out our second channel, Sleeper Dude 2. The number two, no spaces or anything like that. We appreciate you guys watching. We'll have plenty more videos to come. We got all kinds of project cars around here. I'm dying to get on the Fairmont. Uh, Ralphie and Mom are dying to get me on the F100 project. Wawa's dying to get me on the, the Dart station wagon. Squeezy, she, she doesn't want us to work on anything. So we'll just drive Mom's car, I guess. Thank you guys for watching. We really appreciate it. If you guys didn't watch, we wouldn't be able to do this stuff right here. So we appreciate it. Hopefully we give you some good family videos. That's what we try to do around here. And uh, thank you for all you guys are doing. Check out the merchandise below. You can click on the my username and click on the store button. And you can see all our merchandise we sell. We got a few t-shirts. Ralphie's even on a t-shirt. Tell them bye, kids. Bye. We'll see you later. Bye-bye. Peace bye -bye. out. Look at this Peace puppy. Peace out, Girl Scout. Papa. Oh, God, what? No. no, please. Hey, guys. That's hey, all it is. Want one? There's nothing wrong I with it. It's, it's really better than uh, any steak you can buy at the store. <laughs> it's like buying a filet is what you're getting when you buy one of these. Here, honey. Show them. <laughs> Come don't, on. Don't start. What? You don't like Vainas? <laughs> you don't like Vainas? Tell him bye. He likes any flavor, any kind. He's the only goat we have that likes him. He was born for this.